first place than any place. It's also the entertainment capital of the world. It's Frank Sinatra, Kenny Rogers, Buddy Hackett, Tom Jones, and Anne Margaret. And this is Caesar's Palace, the king of the strip, where tonight the big name entertainers are Olympic gymnasts. National champion Julianne McNamara. Olympian Kathy Johnson. American Cup champion Tracy Talavera. Olympian Amy Koopman. Sherry Mann. 11 year old Cindy Rosenberry. Nancy Goldsmith. Chris Montera. And Trina Tente. they refer to this building as the home of champions and tonight's home box office sports presents championship gymnastics welcome to caesar's palace sports pavilion in las vegas nevada site of the second annual caesar's palace women's invitational for hbo sports i'm len dawson along with john trietta and linda jackson we're here to bring you 10 of the most exciting gymnasts in the country today involving some exciting competition and John, the last time that you and I were involved in a gymnastic event was the team championships in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now this event is different, but some of the same performers are here today. Now, what do you look for? Well, in this competition, and we have many young kids who are coming up in competition and who are going to be challenging the more experienced girls. But today I look towards the more experienced and uh, uh, more accomplished performers. We have Tracy Talavera, who qualified number one in the 1980 Olympic trials and also won the American Cup. She's a very determined performer, but coming off an injury. We have Julianne McNamara. She's got, if she goes four for four, nobody in the world is going to beat her. And she's the current USA champion in the all-around. And we have Amy Cooper, another 1980 Olympian. And of course, the very experienced, determined, ever-improving Kathy Johnson at the age of 21. I would say that she's my pick. John, thank you very much. Now, we have a rookie with us today. Linda Jackson is making her first appearance with HBO Sports on a telecast. Now, I know you're excited, Linda. You've also had the opportunity to talk to these young ladies. What is their attitude coming into this event? Well, Len, I think the word excitement is the key word here. They're all pumped and ready to participate in today's event. I spoke with young little Cindy Rosenberry, just 12 years old this year. She is so excited, you could just feel it when she walked in the room. So we're looking forward to some very fine performances today. Linda, thank you very much. Also joining our television crew is Bart Connor, and he is one of the best gymnasts in the world today. Two-time Olympian and currently the world champion in the parallel bar. Bart is standing by to talk to Ed Nepper, the executive director of the USA IGC. Bart? Mr. Nepper, I know that you and the United States Gymnastic Federation have decided to sank shanks in this competition. Tell me, what does a competition like this mean to the national team members? Actually, the national team members get an opportunity to relax for a change while they're competing. And they really enjoy this meet because when they come out, Caesars Palace has been so nice. They've taken the children out, they've dined them, they've taken them to shows, and it's just an entirely different atmosphere. So the girls are up for the competition because they're very relaxed. I think it's going to be great for all of them, and of course in the past it has proven that way. It's becoming one of our best invitationals in the United States. A lot of these invitationals have a lot to offer in, in a look relaxed type competition. I know we do see many of the girls in very intense competitions, and yet sometimes we see the best performances in atmospheres like this, don't we? That's true. We have three exciting girls, well we have ten, but three of them who are nationally and internationally prominent. I guess the top performer here today is Tracy Talavera, and then Julianne McNamara, who is our national champion, and of course, Kathy Johnson. Kathy Johnson is the oldest female competitor we have in the United States at the age of 21. So, and she looks great. I think we're going to have the best competition we've ever seen out of Kathy Johnson. We're looking forward to it. Well, I'm really looking forward to the competition, too. So let's get ready and start to the first event and back to land. Hart, thank you very much. We've now met the competitors we're now ready to get into the actual competition there's going to be four events the vault 
the uneven bars, the balance beam, and the floor exercise. We're going to be doing the vault first. And this is a little different than the other three events because each competitor gets two opportunities and the best score will be the one recorded. Tammy Smith will be the first competitor and she's off and running. It's a strong run, Len, and that was a Sukahara in layout position, layout in a straight body. And I'd like to bring to your attention some of the things to look for in reference to it, uh, a gymnast performing an excellent vault. A very strong run, a quick hurdle onto the board, and watch the hands on the horse. They don't stay on very long. A quick push, a nice stretch, good amplitude, and a lot of distance away from the, uh, from the horse. That was a, a fairly good vault. She kind of split her legs as she was executing the layout. Coming up now, the second attempt. The first attempt was 9.1. Bear in mind, the best of the two will be the final one recorded. Well, that is like a much better vault because she had more distance away from the horse, and also she kept her legs together a lot better. Better toe point, too, Len. Tammy Smith, first competitor, waiting to see her final score, taking another look at it. Let's watch. Take off off the board, a hard push. The legs are much closer together. And I would say that you will score a lot better on that ball. Tammy Smith, 13 years old from Westminster, Maryland, and her score, 9.3, and it is much better, John. Our next participant is 16-year-old Chris Montera from La Palma, California. Let's keep an eye on a very strong run. Let's see if she gets a real good push off. Yes, and that was a super horror with a full twist. Uh, very fine ball, very fine ball. And very difficult, Len. A Sukahara with a full twist. Watch this. It is a round off back somersault and she throws a full twist in there. Good push. And there's the full twist. Off to the side. And you can see she landed to the side of the horse. That would be a major deduction, but aside from that, that was a very good ball. Chris Montera, 9.45 for her first attempt. Bear in mind, once again, it's the best of two attempts. She has one more. The awareness of these kids on these vaults, it's just amazing. Good run. Look at this run. Good push. And another excellent super hour with a full twist. Chris Montera taking a second look at her second attempt. Here's the round off. The hard push bends her knees a little too much on the takeoff. Going off to the side uh, again, I and a hand touched the floor. The first vault will count. Chris Montero, 9 point, 9.3. So her score is going to be 9.45, and that is the score to beat. Amy Koopman, a member of the 1980 Olympic team. This kid is really down to a lean body weight. gymnast could, could really avoid taking some any additional steps that would really increase the score that she's going to attain. Here's the round off and the back somersault and pike position knees to the chest and just a an excellent landing a little bit of a wobble there but not much. Amy Cooper she's 14 from Arlington Heights Illinois 9.2 is her score the score to beat is 9.2 Four or five, and here's her second and final attempt. It's another Sukahara in pike position, but this time she lands and falls. Five tenth deduction. The first vault will count. And let, let me take this opportunity to tell you why a 9-2 on the first vault wasn't scored higher than the, than the other vaults. Basically, because it is worth less. The, the more difficult the vault, the higher it's worth. The Sukahara full twist, twist is worth 10 points. A Sukahara pike is worth only a 9-5. And taking a look at Amy Koopman's second score, 8.65. Our next competitor, Tracy Talavera, hometown Walnut Creek, California. She was the top qualifier for the 1980 Olympic team, and she is making her first attempt. All right, that was a front handspring front, over rotated, never stretched out, landed on her hands, uh, in support position, a major deduction. 
She's going to have to come back with a better ball. Let's watch this. Why did she go over forward? Why did she fall forward? She never kicked out. She really should kick out, try to stand it up. There's a good block, nice tight tuck position, and she should kick out, but she doesn't kick out, over rotates, and lands forward. Notice that she landed on her toes, so her weight was all forward, so she had to go forward. Tracy Talavera. Her score after one attempt, 8.85. That's a five point reduction for landing on a hand. Bear in mind, 9.45 is the score to beat. She has to hit this vault. Okay, now that was a clean hands free throw, a half turn out. Here's the front handspring. There's the half turn out to a back somersault. A lot of distance from the horse. One step back. That's a tenth off. She really nailed a pretty good vault. What was the degree of difficulty? There's the score. Tracy Talavera, 9.5, and she has taken over the lead. I believe that's, that's a 10-0 vault, uh, Len. Now, the youngest of all the competitors is little Cindy Rosenberry. She's just 11. And look at this. Another Sugahara, but not with the distance and the amplitude that you see with the older girls and the stronger girls. But she's cute. She's 11 years old. She's just a little one. Coming up, here's the round off. Pushing. Sukahara, she lays it out and tries to pull it in the pike position. Under rotates it, steps forward to the to the horse. Cindy Rosenberry, her score, 9.05. Here's her second attempt. That was a little bit better, but you can see it is not with the great uh, amplitude and, uh, and distance away from the horse that the judge is looking for. But pretty good for an 11-year-old. Cindy is from Bartow, Pennsylvania. He's a member of the Parkettes of Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I remember when we did the women's team championship, she was 10 years old at the time of competing. 9.3 for Cindy Rosenberry. Now, as they say, here is the, the eldest member of the competitors, Kathy Johnson. She's 21 years of age. She's from Florida. Qualified second in the Olympic trials. Kathy has never looked any better. At 21 years of age, she's just in excellent condition. She's made a lot of improvements. Sukahara layout and notice the powerful landing, dismount, the amplitude, stretch on the body. That is by far the best ball performed today. She looks exceptionally strong coming down. Watch the quick repulsion off the horse with the hands. Quick. Excellent form, toes together, a solid landing, nails it. Kathy Johnson, 9.6, and that is the best vault so far, 9.6. That was her first attempt. Kathy now will attempt number two. Sukahara full twist. Strong run. Here's the half. Turn onto the horse. The repulsion. And now the full twist. Just doesn't get around all the way. And you can see her hands touch the floor. What's the penalty for touching the floor? Well, in a support position, five points of a point. Second attempt for Kathy Johnson, 9.3. But her first one was 9.6. She now leads. Next, Julianne McNamara, 1980 All-Around National Champion. And you said uh, prior to the competition that if she gets all four events put together, no one's going to touch her. That's right. Why? She just does things a lot better than everybody else. Watch this vault as an example. The power. I know what you mean. You see the determination on her face coming down. She's so dynamic. She is so powerful. She goes further away from the horse than anybody else and she floats 
out of the somersaulting movements. Now let's watch this vault. Here's the handspring, front somersault, half twist out, and look how she just kind of floats to the ground. Those are super vaults. And that vault could put this young lady in the lead. Her score, 9.5, but that's less than Kathy Johnson's. Why is that, John? Glenn, to be honest with you, I'd say that uh, I think she was a little bit underscored in that, in that vault. Secondly, one of the deductions might have been that she was a little short and, and landed kind of close to the mat in her landing, her actual landing. Maybe she didn't rotate around enough, but I thought it was just a fantastic vault. That was the first one that you and I are talking about. This is the second attempt by Julianne McNamara. Not as good as the first one because she does fall forward. She tried to perform this vault, the same vault, but keeping her legs straight in pike position, never made it around, but made her head. Second vault, Julianne McNamara, 9.25. Her score, 9.5 in the first one, but it's still less than the leader. The leader, Kathy Johnson, with 9.60. And our next participant is Nancy Goldsmith. She's an up-and-coming uh, up kid from Dick Mubber Hill School. And it's a front hands for front. And Nancy did a good job on that. She didn't have the stretch off the horse that a lot of the judges and top gymnasts in the world are performing today. Let's watch. I think you can see uh, Nancy's vault compared to the one that we had we just saw by Julianne McNamara, right. that there is a difference in the two. She kind of arches over the horse rather than stretching the body and then executing the front tuck. And the judges will see that and, and that will be deducted. Nancy Goldsmith, her score, 9.25. She's 14 years old from Bloomington Hills, Michigan. She'll have to go with that first vault because that time she sat down. Right. Just didn't rotate around enough. And I would say because she really didn't get that good stretch off the horse, kind of arches around and never really makes it around because there just wasn't enough power. You can see she landed on her heels and she had to fall backwards. Her first score was 9.25. The second score for Nancy Goldsmith, 8.8. .8. So she'll go with the first score, 9.25. Sherry Mann, all-around champion, 1980, at the Capitol Invitational. She's 14 years old. All right, now Sherry performed a very difficult ball. And believe it or not, it's, it's probably, for many gymnasts, the, the scariest ball you could perform, which is a full twist onto the horse, and it's a blind movement. Watch. Full twist on, a block, and a full twist off. But if you notice, her legs are all over the place, and she really didn't have a good repulsion off the horse. So, even though it's difficult, there will be a lot of deductions for that. I have the feeling also, Len, that, that this is a good ball for Sherry because she twists well. She doesn't rotate well. That's a very, very good score. 9.45 in her first attempt. Second attempt for Sherry Mann from Potomac, Maryland. Like I said, it's a very difficult ball. She never quits twisting. Okay, hand, handspring on. With a full twist. And a, and a full twist off. Same ball. I think this was better, a better ball. Let's see if the judges think it was a better ball. Let's watch. Watch your leg. The leg foam is a lot better. Full on, full off. The repulsion was better, the distance was better, and the landing was better. And so I said she never stops twisting. <laughs> Cherry Man. The second vault, the score. 9.55. And for Sherry Man, that is the second best score of the event. First going to this young lady, 21-year-old Kathy Johnson. And this is the vault that got her a score of 9.6. Just tremendous artistry and control. Amplitude and the landing. Fantastic. That will complete the first event, the vault competition. The winner, Kathy Johnson with a score of 9.6. Second, Sherry Mann, 9.55. And third place to two competitors, Julianne McNamara and Tracy Talavera.
Let's go down to the floor where Bart Connor is standing by with our champion. Kathy, that was a beautiful layout, Sukahara, and almost made that tuck suit full. Tell me, uh, vaulting's been sort of a hot and cold event for you, hasn't it? Right. I've only been vaulting again for about six weeks because I've had a stress fracture in my toe. So it's been a little while getting it back, but it's, it's coming. Well, I know the event happened so quickly. What in the world goes through your mind as you're sprinting down there to the horse? Well, you mainly have to concentrate on controlling your energy and your adrenaline. You have a lot in competition, and in vault particularly, you can tend to fly over the horse and not get a good repulsion, but I've learned to control it. Well, beautiful. You're looking great. Keep it up. The first event is history. Kathy Johnson is the winner of the vault competition. Now we're going on to the uneven bars. And, John, who are the three girls we should be looking for? Julianne McNamara. Watch her dynamic bars. And we have Kathy Johnson performing a very dangerous release movement called a dolce. And Tracy Talavera. Tracy Talavera. Speaking of her, Linda Jackson had the opportunity to talk to her yesterday. Tracy, you've become quite a little star at the young age of 14. You even have a book written about you, a young, the story of a young gymnast, Tracy Talavera. What was it like having a book written about you? Well, um, it was pretty neat. Like, I had, like, for about six or seven months, I had, this lady came to the gym, followed us around, and just, like, went through our daily schedule with us, and it was kind of fun. <laughs> How long did it take? About six months she followed us around, I guess. And what's it like now to go into a bookstore and see, among all the other books, a book with your name on the cover? Well, it's pretty neat. Lots of times my mom runs in the store, oh, I want to see if you have your book. Mom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so how does your family feel about you and gymnastics? Well, I don't think they mind it. Um, I don't know, really. <laughs> it's hard to tell. We don't really talk too much about gymnastics at home because I'm in the gym all day. And <laughs> What's your training schedule like now? I know you've switched coaches. You're now with Clark Johnson, and you used to be in Oregon. What what brought that about? Well, um, it was getting, like, really expensive for my parents, and I they just decided they wanted me home because my sister's only going to be home for a little bit longer because she's 17 right now. And so I guess they just wanted the whole family together for a little while anyway. <laughs> How do you feel about being back home? Well, I like it. It's nice. Um, gymnastics isn't quite as good as it was in Oregon. But I I'm getting by, I guess. <laughs> What's your schedule like now with, with training? Well, I get out of school usually around 12, and then I um, go home and eat and stuff. And then I usually go to the gym about 3, 2 or 3, and I work out till about 7 or 8. So it's a tough schedule, and I'm sure it'll pay off tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tracy. Tracy Talavera, she'll be first up in the second event, which is the uneven bars, and she's very much in the running for the all-around championship, 9.5 in the vault. She's considered one of the best in the world. Well, she fell. She's down. That's going to cost her at least five-tenths of a point, and for all practical purposes, John, she can't win this event. What happened there? Well, it was a very difficult skill, and it's really a shame that she, she missed that, uh, that skill because it was high risk and original movement, and let's see if Tracy can finish up with style. And that's going to be another five-point deduction. She has lost one full point on the two falls that she had in this event. And that's going to pretty well knock her out, not just in this event, but it's going to hurt her tremendously in the all-around. Now, let's take a look at why she's missed this event. She's going for the top bar. There's a free hip to the handstand. Now, this is called a stall to shoot into a front somersault. Super difficult movement. Never really got high enough to grab that top bar. She mentioned in the interview with Linda Jackson that she changed coaches. Could that be a factor? 8.8 .8 is her score. Len, absolutely. When you have a different coach, you have a different training system, you have different diets, you're working out at different times, you're working out in a new environment. All these are definite factors. And she herself said in the interview that the gymnastics wasn't quite as good as in Oregon. Here's our second competitor, 11-year-old Cindy Rosenberry. This kid really can swing on the bars for just a, a little kid. And one has to remember that bars is not so much strength, but it is really basically a swing event. Let's see if she does a real good dismount. Double back somersault. And another sit, another five pitch production. But you know what's inter what was interesting about this, then is that she didn't under-rotate that movement. She had too much. The adrenaline must be pumping through this kid. And 
She just over rotated that double back somersault. Look at her face. She's just happy to be there, isn't she? She's now, having a great time. Tell me this. She's not very tall. Is that an advantage, a disadvantage, or does it make any difference on the uneven bars? Well, the bigger you are, the more mass you have to move around on the bars. And I would say that having a nice, slim body like this really is a tremendous advantage. Now, you can see she over rotated that double back somersault and five tenth reduction, but it was a good routine. The elements are there. She needs more maturity. Cindy Rosenberry, her score, 8.85. Next, our third competitor, Trina Tente. She's 15 years old from Davis, California. She has some very remarkable bar changes, especially on the top bar. She does a very nice pirouette sequence. Now watch this. Stall the shoot. Hops out to a summer stall. Handstand. Stalled her. Full turn. Excellent combination. Free hip. Another stall to shoot. And a front somersault with a half twist. That was really an excellent routine. I would say that that the major thing wrong with that, with that routine was that she was bending her arms on the stall to shoots, but it was a very fine routine. What about the landing? She did move and she, she stumbled somewhat on the landing. How much will they deduct for that? Well, let's take a look. Every step is a tenth off. Now, watch the arms. Her arms weren't quite straight enough on those stall to shoots, but it was a very dynamic full turn off the top of the bar. And her arms, once again, are bent slightly. Now, look at the arms again. Bent again on the stall to shoots. And here it is. Here's that front with a half. And there's one, two. And she's off the mat three steps, three tenths off. Rina Tente, her score, 9.55, and that is the leader so far. Trina Tente, 9.55. Coming up next. Those dismounts count, Helen? Yes, sir. Kathy Johnson, she was the winner of the vault competition. So, so far in the all-around, she is the leader. Glenn, I'm really psyched about her bar routine. It is really improved, and she's going to perform a, a movement called a Delchev, which is a, a fantastic release in the middle of that routine. Watch, I'll tell you when it's coming up. Coming up right after a giant swing. Toe on, toe off into the handstand. Good body extension. There's the gen. Now here comes the Dolchev and the release and makes it. Tremendous control. This is a super routine right now. Notice the, the body is so tight. Tremendous control. Double kick. Great this time. Woo! Okay. She's really happy about that one. Let's take a look at that, at that Dolchev release. I'm really psyched about how much he's improved at her age. Here's the toe on, toe off. Look how straight the body is, the extension. Head perfectly in, in line with the body. Watch the giant swing. And here's the Dolchev. Half turn, front somersault, release the top bar, regrasp the top bar. Fantastic. This is great stuff. Good toe point afterwards, never breaks form. 9.55 is the score to beat. Kathy Johnson, her score in the uneven bars, 9.65, and she is the current leader, not only in the all-around, but also in the uneven bars. Coming up next, Julianne McNamara, 9.65, the score to beat, and she is considered one of the top uneven bar uh, competitors in the world, isn't she? Absolutely. Now, you saw Trina Tinti stall those, and they were with bent arms. She performs all her movements, with straight arms. Is that more difficult? Oh, a lot more difficult, and there are extra points back, bonus points back for virtuosity. High level of performance. What about the continuation of movement throughout the routine? Extremely important. Uh, one must have a uh, uh, continuity in swing. Look at this. To a giant swing. Hop. Stall the shoot with straight arms. One movement to the next with tremendous flow. She looks so strong, she's so sure of herself. That was, I think she, she this is a mistake in a cover up, but a very good cover up, but a, a mistake. Let's see if she hits a real good dismount. And beautiful front with a half twist with straight legs. This was an excellent routine, tremendous routine. And what I really liked about it, she was thinking. Even though she made a mistake, she managed to cover up without any real deductions. This Look, is phenomenal. The smile on Julianne's face. She knows that she had an excellent routine. 9.65 is the score for Julianne to beat. Look at the stall of the shoot with straight arms. 
And now the jam through the bars. The kips are very precise. A hop into the handstand, a little delay there. This is where I think she got into trouble. Here's the stole the shoot. I don't believe she's supposed to do this. A simple bar beat. And look at this little turn she does. That is all made up. That was made up. But good innovation. Julianne McNamara. 9.65 the score to beat. 9.8. And she is the current leader in the uneven bars. 9.8. Remember, 10.0 is a perfect score. And speaking of that, Julianne has recorded 10 or the 10, 14 times in national competition. Our next competitor, Nancy Goldsmith, 14 from Bloomington Hills, Michigan. Here's the same hop release. She's also coached by Dick Mulvihill. Dick Mulvihill turns out really outstanding. Look at Jim. that. Woo. That was a, a, a heck release to, and stands on the, on the low bar. That is, that is wild. That is wild. Nancy Goldsmith. Watch this release. This is called a hect and pops and stands on the low bar. It's wild. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough enough grabbing a hold with your hands, let alone with your feet. And here's that dismount, front somersault with a half twist and a remarkable bar routine for such a young kid. 14 years old, that's Nancy Goldsmith. They do look young, don't they? 9.35. Our next competitor, Sherry Mann. Sherry was 9.55 in the vault, so she is very much in the running for the all-around. She is really known for her in-between-the-ball work and also her, her unusual combinations. Look at that. Front somersault with a full turn. Her routine is much quicker than the other girl. And the transitions from, from one bar to the next. She's constantly moving from one bar, the low bar, to the top bar. And this is just uh, an excellent routine, kind of different what the, than what the other girls are performing. Her vault was much different also. Absolutely. She, she's not the regular type of gymnast. Now, that was a, a heck with a full... It was really a free hit with a full twist. She didn't go all the way around in the full twist. And that is a major deduction because she, she did not fulfill the dismount as well as she wanted to. But let's watch the beginning of this routine. She really moves from one bar to the to the other in a hurry. Right. Now there she is. From low bar to the top bar, back to the low bar, back to the top bar with her front somersault. And a full turn back to the low bar very unique combinations back to the top bar the transitions from one bar to the next just excellent how much do you think that the dismount hurt her we'll take a look right now sherry oh, man about three tenths 9.2 sherry man our next competitor 13 year old tammy smith i like this kid this kid is going to be on the national team this year. That's my prediction. She is just an excellent gymnast, and she has a tremendous amount of body awareness. Uh, I really like that. Gregor Weiss, who is our coach, has done a marvelous job with her. Do these girls understand anything about fear? The, the mount that she had and the dismount. Look great. Glenn, I don't think these kids do have fear. They've been very well trained, and she has an awful lot of uh, confidence in her ability to do these skills. Now, that was a very difficult dismount, a double back somersault. Let's watch it. Double back somersault. One, two, and really a wonderful landing on that. This is just uh, an up-and-coming kid. Let's keep an eye on it. Tammy Smith. 9.4 for Tammy Smith. Remember, the top score so far is 9.8 by Julianne McNamara. Our next competitor, Chris Montero. Chris on the vault scored a 9.45. Remember, she has a 9.8 to beat. How strong is she in this event? All these youngsters are very strong on all these events, and I would say that Chris has, well, that's a very difficult movement, but she stopped. 
What does that mean when she stopped? Well, when she stopped in her moves, I would say that's probably about a three-tenth reduction. And there's a the front summy. She just about missed that one, didn't she? Yes. She has tremendous amplitude on her movements. Coming each this mount, that's a front with a half. Uh, that opening combination was a very unique combination, and if she didn't stop, I would say that this routine would have scored very high. Chris Montero. Let's watch this uh, very difficult movement. Look how high she is, the amplitude above the bar. And there's that front somersault from an eagle grip. And there was the stop, about a three-tenth deduction. But in order to really do well on the events today, Len, you have to perform these very difficult movements that involve risk, and risk meaning the chance. Look at that high front somersault way above the top bar. In order to score high, you have to have these risky movements. You know, it really amazes me, the abilities of these young people. Chris Montera, 9.4. Remember the top score? 9.8 by Julianne McNamara. Amy Koopman will be shooting for that. Amy is 14 years old. Amy was a 1980 Olympian. Kip with a half turn. A front stall to shoot. Didn't make it around. That's a deduction. That's very unfortunate. A stall to shoot. Another stall to shoot. Toe on. And oh! Ooh, okay. She's okay. That scares me. No. As she placed her foot on the bar, she's going to probably do a, a front somersault with a half twist off, something like that. And put one foot on the bar, which is a technique for a toe on front with a half and at the very bottom of the bar her hand just got ripped off the top bar the force of the swing pulled it right off the bar that scares me she's 14 years old she can't weigh 100 pounds is that right she's a very lean and body she weight. took a real shot when she fell it's amazing how durable and how tough at the very bottom of the bar right her hand just ripped right off Felt she hit the back of her head also. Amy Keith. Keith Clevin, uh, who's our trainer here. 8.75 is her score, but more importantly, hopefully she's all right. And that concludes the competition for the second event, the uneven bars. Let's take a look at the winning performance by Julianne McNamara. Julianne's bar routine, super bars, but once again, what impressed me was that she managed to make a mistake and innovate and cover up that mistake and still score extremely well. Here is that mistake. Tremendous cover-up. Innovation. No deduction. Perfectly allowable. It's an optional bar routine. And here are the standings. Julianne McNamara, 9.8, won the uneven bars. Kathy Johnson, second. Trina Tente, third. Let's now take a look at the standings in the all-around after two events. Julianne McNamara in first, 19.30. Kathy Johnson in second. Chris Montera is in third place. Down on the floor now, Bart is there with the winner of the uneven bars, Julianne McNamara. Julianne, that was a great bar set. You're such a tiger when you compete, but that wasn't your real routine, was it? No, I had a little problem with my front installer, but I'm getting good at covering it up. <laughs> Yeah, it sure looks like it. In fact, your routine is usually better than most people's, even when you mess up a little bit. What did you have trouble with? Um, well, my front staller, I came out too fast, so if I would have gone to my back staller, I might have ripped off or something. Yeah, well, it's good. You still seem to score pretty high with it. You, you should keep missing your routines. Maybe your 9 eights will come through every time, huh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Julian. Good luck to you. A short while ago, Amy Koopman fell, and the man who was attending her was the athletic trainer, and Linda Jackson's on the floor with him right now. Keith Clevin, physical therapist, athletic trainer. What does that mean? Well, it's a person who is schooled in physical therapy as well as in sports medicine from an athletic training standpoint. I see. What is your role here today at Caesars Palace? Well, this is the uh, fourth year now that we've covered the meets here at Caesars Palace and taken care of the women and men's uh, gymnastic programs. My responsibilities are to take care of the injuries and hopefully not have any to uh, assist in prevention and also the treatment if we have any problems. 
I noticed the fall that Amy Koopman just took off the parallel bars. What type of injury could she have suffered? The, uh, she could have suffered everything from a bruise and some muscle uh, tearing to a more severe fracture of a vertebrae. But she came out of it all right. Fine. Everything's fine. What else are you involved with in the world of sports? Well, I'm involved in the boxing world. I'm involved uh, right now heavily in some professional pitchers that are in training. I really am uh, specializing almost 100% in sports injuries and of all sports. Uh, well, we're real happy to have you here today. Thank you very much. And now back to you, Len. Linda, thank you very much. And that man is very important to these competitors. Amy Koopman, you went down uh, with a fall, is not going to compete anymore this afternoon. Neither is Trina Tente. So we're down to eight performers as we get ready for the third event, which is the balance beam. John, to me, this is a very difficult event because that beam is only four inches wide. Well, balance is obviously the, uh, the main ingredient on all the skills performed, and you will see acrobatic movements, gymnastic movements, balance movements, strength movements. And the key is, can the gymnasts stay on? If they fall, the chances of them doing well in the all-around and in this event are really limited. You're looking at Kathy Johnson, our first competitor in the balance beam, and she has looked so well in the other two events. She looks very well and very good in this one. That's a back walkover to a back layout, not a wobble. And you know what's very important? Kathy has understood that with experience, that it's important to control your energy, not to get overexcited on the balance beam. That's a round off to a back somersault again. Two high risk movements. There are basic requirements in each of these events. Is that correct? Or well, in particular, a, this event? A full turn, one that she just performed, is a requirement, followed by another full turn. Here's the handstand. Back extension. Another back extension. Another excellent combination. This is certainly going to put the pressure on the other performers, including Julianne McNamara. If Kathy could get off this event without any major falls, and there certainly haven't been any so far. A round off double twist. What a routine. This kid has really learned how to control her act. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Kathy Johnson, balance beam. She stayed upright the entire performance. Her concentration is just amazing. Starts off with a, with a split. Watch this acrobatic movement. A back walkover. A back somersault in layout position. Stretched body. John, you said something that amazes me. You said concentration. And when you think that these performers, she's the, the old one, 21 years old, Kathy Johnson, but the young ones have that type of concentration. 9.55 for Kathy Johnson. It's going to be a hard score to beat. Let's see if Julianne can focus her concentration, control this amazing amount of energy that's in that powerful body. Control is very important. Being very precise on this event while you're performing these acrobatic movements. Is this the most difficult of the four events? In reference to pressure, I'd say so. I think it's the most difficult. A lot of pressure on, on these gymnasts. They know that one little mistake, they fall off the event. You can't really compensate that easily. If you fall off, it's a five-tenth deduction. You were talking when she was on the uneven bars that she got out of her routine, yet she came up with a 9.8 score. She made a mistake, compensated, managed to do a great job doing that and and there was no deduction now here if you make a mistake and you fall off five tenths two back hand springs in a row she's doing it so far Lynn handstand straight arms good balance and a planche a strength move Whew. to a back hip circle you normally see those back hip circles on the uneven bars, and here she's doing it on the balance beam. Straddle jump. Uh-oh, that's uh, it. That hurt, didn't it? Yeah, that hurt me, too. <laughs> Five-tenths. 
Let's see if she can avoid falling off. That was a, a back somersault. She got up right away, continued, trying to maintain a continuity. Getting set for a dismount, a full twist. Aside from that, that uh, one mistake that she made, she had an excellent routine. But you said prior to the competition that she had to do be consistent in all four events. Julianne McNamara. Len, watch where her hips are. As she jumps up in the air, her hips are back, and the weight distribution is back. That's why she's falling off the balance beam. But she gets up right away, and what impressed me an awful lot was that she was able to regain her concentration. Watch this very difficult move. A back somersault in pike position, not a wobble. And her dismount was very well performed, so she ended in very good style. And there's the full twisting back layout somersault. Julianne McNamara was leading after two events. She was in first place in the all-around. Her score on the beam, 9.2. So aside from that mistake, she actually had an outstanding routine. Five-tenths of a point off. Could, could have been a 9-7. Nancy Goldsmith, currently ranked sixth in the all-around. The score to beat is by Kathy Johnson, 9.55. That's a very unique mount called a head kick. A diving front handspring, a back handspring with one arm. I really like the beginning. Some of these young ladies get a little showbiz in some of their routines. <laughs> Such control of the body is just beautiful. Nancy's 14 years of age, and we saw her at the USA IGC National Championships last year that was televised at home box office. And two back handsprings to a back layout. And she has improved. She's working with the Oregon Academy of Artistic Gymnastics on the Dick and Linda Movahill. They're doing a fine job with it. She's having a good meet. For those of us that have difficulty just walking on a four-inch wide space, uh, that's the things that these young ladies are doing. <laughs> there it is. There's a little showbiz. That's the showbiz. Excellent routine so far. Nancy Goldsmith. Back handspring, back handspring. Double twist off. Didn't make it all the way around on the dismount. But the total routine, she has to feel very good about it. No faults, no major mistakes. And many unique combinations. I love the beginning of her routine. John, you're absolutely right. When I saw her at the uh, Women's Team Championship in Allentown, Pennsylvania, she has improved greatly since that time. From 13 to 14, big changes occur with these girls. They really develop a lot more strength, confidence. Watch the beginning. A head kip mount, very difficult. Easy move to fall off on. That's a head kick. Now watch this. She's going to dive and then do a front handspring. Dive, front handspring, and on the back handspring that's coming up, one arm just touching the beam. One arm. A one arm back handspring. Interesting. Nancy Goldsmith. Her score, 9.55, and that ties her for first place with Kathy Johnson so far on the balance beam. Next coming up, currently fourth in the all-around, Sherry Mann. Nancy has to really be excited about that. Jump into a handstand. Trying to keep your body square, facing the beam. Not allowing your body to wiggle or turn will prevent these falls. A back handspring. Back tuck. Now, what would have been a more exciting combination would, would, would have been a back handspring immediate back somersault. She stopped. A front somersault with a one-leg takeoff. For those of us who can't even do a somersault, mm -hmm. to do it on a four-inch uh, wide beam is to me is really something. Well, they start off on the floor doing these. 
Then they go to these very low beams that are about a foot off the ground, and two feet off the ground, and higher and higher. John, where do they maintain their eye contact when they're on the beam? Well, throughout the entire routine, they are constantly trying to focus their eyes either on the end of the beam or at the side. They have a whole, the whole routine is geared to focus their, their eyes, like she just did on the side, to make sure that it's choreographed. Even head movements, hand movements, everything's choreographed, including where they're going to focus. Now, she's focusing down at the beam where she was going to punch her feet before the dismount. And that was a very good dismount, double twist. The Cherry's uh, form and the routine didn't have the continuity and the grace that I'm sure that she would have liked to have uh, demonstrated. He has a split leap. And let's watch that dismount, and you'll see what I'm talking about. On the punch, he's looking down at the end of the beam now. It's a round off, punch, watch the double twister, but watch the leg form. A few tenths deduction on the leg form, and one step back, that's another tenth deduction. When you say leg forms, they were crossed, is that what you mean? Right, they should they, not be? They should be together with, with legs uh, and toes straight and pointed. 9.2 for Sherry Mann. This kid's a tumbling maniac. Watch this kid on the balance beam. Hammy Smith. Salts all over the place, saltos, somersaults, all over. How about that one? A somersault That's onto the outrageous. beam. Outrageous. And she just runs right down the beam after the somersault. I'd ask you about this young lady before. I talk about she has no fear. That was a pretty good indication right there that Look at this. she doesn't. Back somersault, back somersault to a knee to a front somersault. Her tumbling ability is very, very unique. 13 years old, Tammy Smith, Westminster, Maryland. Coached by Greg and Marge Weiss. This kid's a real comer. You know, you look at her face, too, afterwards, you know, during the competition. She really enjoys it. Yes. It doesn't seem to be phasing her, this whole thing. And this is really the first time she's really gone against the top competitors in the United States. Watch this. Another front semisole. Very difficult acrobatic combinations. Does she need uh, to coordinate her other movements along with the acro acrobatic uh, movements? Yes. It, it, there are dance elements here. There are transitions. Her transitions aren't quite as strong. Her hair's a little theatrics, which... Some people in the crowd are finding it cute. But look at that double-twisting back somersault. This is an excellent routine. And the double back somersault, double-twisting back somersault at the end was with very good form. Legs were very, very straight. Look at that face. Did I tell you that she really enjoys the competition? Tammy Smith. Greg Weich, her co coach, is uh, super pleased about that one. Watch the beginning here. Front somersault. And then steps right out, right down the beam. They Terrific. Call, they, Terrific. <laughs> they call this part here, they've made up a name. All these kids make up names when they have original movements. They call this the Tammy Ammy, I think. It is a back somersault, another back somersault to her knee, and watch this, a front somersault from her knee. Without hands. Outrageous. Tammy Smith, 9.4. Is that a good score for that routine? Very good score. Or should it be better? I don't know. I think I, I'm, I'm uh, more generous, I guess, than the officials. I would have given her a high score. Chris Montera, currently in third place in the all-around. She's doing a fine job today. Body control. Watch out. And she's working kind of cautiously on the beam. Two back handsprings of fall, five-tenth deduction. But, but Len, watch how she's working on the beam. Not rapidly with the grace that you've seen the other performers and she's working almost like she expected to fall off is that an indication when, in that manner that perhaps she's uh, concerned about this event yes and she's not demonstrating the confidence 
even, even if you're afraid of falling off, don't show it. Back somersault, a little bit out of balance. Another back somersault, steps out. Again, a little bit out of balance. An arabesque. Very good flexibility. You have to have nerves of steel on this event. Control that energy. Ground off, double twist. Well, she had, she fell off and she had too many wobbles. And I'm sure she's not pleased with that routine. And it's unfortunate because it will really affect her all-around score today. Going into this event, she was in third place in the all-around. Let's watch these back somersaults. In tuck position. There's one. And look what I'm talking about. A little bit out of position there. Tenth, two-tenth reduction. Another back somersault. And again, a little bit out of position. Stepping back. Those wobbles all add up in the routine. And into the arabesque, showing her flexibility. Chris Montero. 8.9 on the beam. Coming up now is Tracy Talavera. And the fall that she had on the uneven bars really hurt her because she started off very well with a 9.5 in the vault. Let's see how Tracy does on the balance beam. She is one of the finest performers in the world, and she's in trouble already. That's a shame. This really bothers me because Tracy is such a great competitor. Did she lose her concentration? To me, it looked like right there that uh, she didn't have it. Well, maybe concentration, but I see her performing in a way in which there are a number of incorrect techniques how could that be when she was one of the best in the world? You know, she's grown a lot. She has grown and put on uh, a few pounds. And, you know, when kids go from 13 to 14, 14 to 15, there are changes. And she has definitely changed. And that changes the weight distribution on her body. And this could be something that she has to grow through, such as Nadia Kamenich did. For a while there, Nadia grew three, four inches, and it really affected her performances. This could be a transition that Tracy's going through. But you can see from last year to this year, there have been remarkable changes in her body. Glenn, we also mentioned that she's now training in a different place, different center. There's a, a full twist. And when you're training someplace else, you're training different times, the diet is different, different coaching techniques. And this could all have an effect. Taking into consideration, she was the top qualifier for the 19th. 80 Olympic team. Tracy wasn't happy. You saw her face in that routine at the, at the very end just then. She wasn't pleased with that. It's a loss of body control. It's a simple press and a turn and her legs, instead of splitting, they kind of lost control and right down. Watch even on the side aerial. Instead of her leg going directly over her head on the side aerial, it goes to the side and that is really a technical fault in reference to the consistency of performing this movement. I mean, you can't fall off unless you, your foot goes directly. Now watch, legs going to the side. See that second leg to the side? That is not what she wants. She wants the legs directly over her head. Tracy Talavera. But I'm sure Tracy is I'm sure Tracy's going to not let this affect her or phase her. She'll just get back to her training and, uh, and get her stuff together. The youngest competitor, 11 years old. Cindy Rosenberry. A front aerial mount, a little bit different than the other gymnasts have performed. Not considered a very difficult mount, but a back walk over back tuck. The acrobatic awareness of the young kids, amazing. Scissor split leap. She works light on the beam, which is very nice. But of course, being so small, the beam is a little wider for her. <laughs> Okay, now that was a tough skill. Uh, an acrobatic movement into a back layout. Just wasn't square. At her age, should she attempt something as difficult? With her ability, yes. I'm sure in practice she makes it most of the time. 
You only get one chance, though, in this oh. in this competition. Isn't that the truth? Bear in mind, she is 11 years old. Back handspring, back handspring, back handspring, three in a row. Getting set for a dismount. And a double twisting back layout. Okay. You can see, give this kid another year or two where she's going to be at. I can see just looking at, at their face. Look at that face. And she loves it. And that she is not phased by making a mistake. She's been very well coached by Bill and Donna Strauss. And the Parquettes have a very fine organization. And this is a very talented youngster. And there's the back somersault from a back walkover. Nice straight body lines. Cindy Rosenberry, 9.0. And that concludes our third event, the balance beam. We have co-winners. Kathy Johnson and how thrilling. Nancy Goldsmith ties Kathy Johnson on the balance beam. She must uh, be a cloud nine. There we have the final standings in the beam. Kathy Johnson, Nancy Goldsmith, 9.55. Hammy Smith in third place, 9.40. After three events in the all-around standings, Kathy Johnson in first place, but just three-tenths of a point behind is Julianne McNamara. In third place, Nancy Goldsmith. Let's go down to the floor now, because Bard is standing by with the two winners of the beam. Kathy, that was a beautiful beam routine. What was going through your mind? Well, here again, like on vault, I had to try and control my adrenaline. It's about um, my third meet back after about five minutes, five months off. So it gets better each meet. I'm just hoping it still gets better. Well, that's great. A beam is sort of a fickle event anyways. It's good to see that you're coming back very strong on that event. Are you trying any special type of concentration? Um, not really. Nothing any different. I just, a more intensified concentration. Well, great. Keep it up. Nancy, you're in the big leagues now. How'd it go? It went good, really. Well, what do you think about all this now? You're competing with the top-notch girls. What do you think of all this? Uh, it's pretty scary at first. I don't know. Well, what's going through your mind as you're going through those routines? I'm just trying to do the best I can, like I practice. Well, you're very talented. It looks like there's no problem there. What, what about this? Do you think you're going to break onto the scene with the national team here in the next year or so? I hope so. I'll keep trying. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks, Bart. Yesterday, Linda Jackson had an opportunity to talk to the current all-around leader, Kathy Johnson. Kathy, what's it like being a 21-year-old woman and competing against girls as young as 11 and 12 years old? Well, in the gymnasium and in a competition, you don't really notice the age. We're all gymnasts competing in the same sport. But now when you get out of the gym, uh, that's a different story. I could see the difference. What would that difference be? Well, they're young and, and a little immature in the way that they act, which is great, because they should be acting like 11 and 12-year-olds. And uh, they have boundless energy in the hotel rooms and stuff. And it's good for me to see that. It kind of releases an inner energy that I have. I just have to discipline mine and save it for the gym. Do you see a difference in the way you're performing today than, say, five or six years ago? Oh, a great difference. Um, with all the experience I've had in competition, I've learned to... Um, relax and calm myself down like in warm-ups and in the competition and only use the energy that I need. What would you consider to be your goals with gymnastics? Um, well, you know, like I said, when I've been in gymnastics as long as I have, I've accomplished many of the goals that I've set. Now I've learned to have day-to-day -day goals. I have a goal every single day of my life, um, not just in the gym, but uh, I try and accomplish those every time. Thank you very much, Kathy. Three down and one to go. Coming up now, the floor exercise. And there's only three tenths of a point separating Julianne McNamara from Kathy Johnson for first place. And John, what can we look for in, in this exercise? Well, very, very difficult tumbling movements. And what you're also looking for is a harmonious change between these tumbling movements and these dance movements. And the gymnasts have to utilize the entire floor exercise area. And of course, they have to try not to make any major mistakes. Now, if they sit down on a tumbling movement, that's a five-tenth deduction, and that's why those three-tenths, you know, anything could happen. 
Kathy Johnson will have to really perform a real good routine because Julianne McNamara, she's great on this event. We're looking right now, 14-year-old Sherry Mann. Sherry's getting set for her, her beginning. And here comes that difficult tumbling movement. Double back somersault and under rotated it. Landing in that position, that's a 5 tenth deduction. A jump, double turn. What you're saying that for first place, McNamara or Johnson, if they do that and the other one does not, that's right. Going to determine the winner. Yes. See if Sherry could finish her routine without any more errors. Round off back handspring, double twist. Good. Well, aside from that major mistake in the beginning, the rest of the routine wasn't a bad routine. It was pretty good. I think that the dance elements could have been better also. How important is the music to your routine? Well, you know, the routine, everything, it's, it's a total routine, from the tumbling movements, the acrobatic movements, and it has to be done within the framework of the music. And here's this mistake that's coming up. Double back somersault, not an easy movement. And she just doesn't get enough height, power, and rotation. She under-rotates the movement. Here's one, and she has to get all the way around. Two, and as you can see, hands touching the floor. Sherry Mann, 8.8. You can see she is not happy with that performance. Coming up next, in fourth place in the all-around, Tammy Smith, 13-year-old from Westminster, Maryland. This is the kid who tumbles like man on the balance beam, did a great dismount on the uneven bars, and I'm sure she's going to do a super pass. There's a whip back, double back somersault. She has so much power, she just over-rotated that movement. She stumbled somewhat, but did not fall. Is that going to affect her? She'll have a few tenths off, but she had a lot of height, a lot of amplitude. Has a front handspring front. Double twister. Double twisting back somersault. She's having a great competition. A double turn. Set for her dismount. Double twister, a little piked on that. Her form isn't quite as good as it could be, but her tumbling is just excellent. That will come with age, won't it? And maturity and more practice in the dance area. But what a meet for her. She had an exceptional series of events. We can watch the beginning of this. This is a whip back. She does the second move is a whip back. It's a back handspring without any arms. Now watch this. Here's the round off. This is the back handspring without any arms to a back handspring with the hands on the mat, followed by another back handspring. Now watch this double back somersault really way up there, high in the air. And she is really up. almost out of the screen. Double back somersault, kicks out, over rotates, one, two steps backwards, three steps, two three tenth deduction. Big smile on her face. That's the thing that's really impressed me throughout all of the events on Tammy Smith 9.25 is that she always has that smile on her face. Currently six in the all around, Chris Montera. All these girls are throwing big moves in the beginning. Double back somersaults. Really important to make it. To me, that indicates that she has had more dance lessons than Tammy. Double back somersault in pike position. That's another mistake. And you're right, Lynn. And she's a little bit older than Tammy. She's ancient. She's 16. <laughs> I like her dance. Very graceful. 
turns are very nice. They're on toe. She's on her toes throughout most of the routine. And she doesn't have that explosive tumbling power that Tammy Smith has. It's an Arabian to a double twister. Now, this is a very nice routine. It's unfortunate that she had that major mistake in the beginning on the double back somersault, but it was in pike position. It wasn't an easy move. Look at these jumps and leaps. Very nice presentation. And that was a super double twist. A perfectly straight body and an excellent landing. I wonder how much the judges are going to hurt her for that, for, for that beginning. Obviously a five-point deduction. Chris Montero, 16 years old. And she was in third place before balance beam, and that fall on the balance beam really hurt her. And now this fall on the double back somersault in pike position also is a five-tenth deduction. And it's in pike position. She keeps her knees straight. Watch. Chest up in the air. Nice lift. Pike just doesn't get it around all the way. Hands touching the floor and on her knees. 9.05 for Chris Montero. Tracy Talavera, seventh all around currently. Now, this has to be very, very disappointing for this young lady. Well, I'm sure Tracy's going to go back home and evaluate, think. She's a tough competitor, but I like the music. Here we go. Come on, Tracy. Double back somersault. Now, she over-rotated that. Too much adrenaline. Five-tenth deduction on that. A little out of balance over there. So of the four events, Tracy has fallen in three of the four. That, and, and Tracy was the most consistent performer in the United States last year. But I have to tell you, Lenny, one more time, she has grown an awful lot, and this is still early in the gymnastic season for these gymnasts. They all want to really be in great shape next year, September, when the trials for the World Games are taking place. There's a double jump. Double turn. Nice little pirouette here. You notice the change of pace in, in the music blend, and that's how it affects the routines. These routines are very well choreographed. Facilities here at Caesars Palace really are tremendous. Aren't they fantastic? They've done a marvelous job hosting this event. Okay, Tracy. Tracy Talavera. One of the outstanding gymnasts in the world today. Not having her, her day today, though. This is a rough one for Tracy. This is one of the roughest meets that she's probably had in a very, very long time. Let's watch the beginning. Round off, double back somersault, over-rotating it. Back handspring, here we go. And double back somersault two times around, folks, in tuck position, knees to the chest, one, two, and just over-rotated around, sat down. On her heels, I see that right. Right. That's why she went backward. And she's out of the Florex area also. You know the thing about her, and I've been watching her during uh, this competition, how she reacts after adversity, and she comes right back. Look at her face. It doesn't seem to phase her that much. 9.1 for Tracy Talavera. That's why people love her. And I am really a pro Tracy Talavera person. Uh, I just hope that uh, everything goes according to her plans. She is one fantastic gymnast. And one bad meet, I think she'll just forget about it. She's tough. She'll get right back on track. Listen to the beginning of this music. <laughs> Cindy Rosenberry. And there's a split leap at the
at the crescendo of the music. That's how the music affects the uh, performances. Triple twisting back somersault. Woo! Nothing to it, folks. Change of pace in the music. <laughs> Cute. There are requirements during this routine, right? Right there, as an example, here's a double back somersault. Ooh. That was tough. She is tough. She landed right on her head and still jumped right up. She, I think she's pretty physically tough also. If you notice, no bandages or ankles taped or anything like that. Another major change of pace in the routine. One of the requirements is a, a tumbling pass in series that has two different types of acrobatic movements. She hasn't performed one yet. Let's see if she performs it for her dismount. Back handspring, a double twister. A great routine for a very young gymnast who's going to have many favorable experiences in the sport in future years. A lot of tumbling ability. Here's a coach, Bill Strauss. But Cindy is going to have to really learn not to get upset. And she is upset right now. You can see that the fans love her, though. Oh, yeah. Watch this triple twister. Three times. Straight body. Layout position. Here we go. We'll count them. One, two, three, three. Just tremendous. Look at that face. <laughs> Cindy Rosenberry. She's really upset. 9.1. 11 years old. Now. Okay, here leader, we go. Here we go. Currently, first the all around. Kathy Johnson. She cannot afford a mistake. She is three tenths of a point ahead of Julianne McNamara for the all-around. One and a half twister to a double twister. Excellent, but Len, her second pass is a double back somersault in pike position. If she doesn't make it, Julianne has a good chance of winning. If she makes it, this lady probably will win the all-around. Here it comes. Double back somersault, pike position. One, two, and... Fantastic. <laughs> Striking. It... She is also, I think, the best dancer in floor exercise in the United States. She's known throughout the entire world for her dance. And her tumbling has gotten to a point where she can compete with the best of the, in the world on this event. A double twister for a dismount. I haven't seen any flaws for you. Uh, this is going to be a very high score, and I think she's just about wrapped up the all-around competition. What a performance. What an inspiration to the young kids. Kathy Johnson, 21 years old. And they keep saying the eldest at 21 years of age. <laughs> Three tenths of a point ahead of Julianne McNamara going into this final event. Watch this. One and a half twister. One, two, steps out and does another round off back handspring to a double twister. April. Little split on the legs there. Not much. Stays within the boundaries. And watch this. A double back somersault in pike position. And Len, look at the, at the flexibility. She compresses her knees into her face to such an extent is, it is just remarkable. Watch. Watch the compression on this double back somersault. She pikes, brings her knees right into her face. Watch. Look at this. 
knees right into her face. Look at that position. Phenomenal. Hard, hard event to beat. Kathy Johnson, 9.8. Wow. That's it. She has wrapped up the all-around. 10 is a perfect score. Julianne McNamara currently was in second place going into this final event. Three-tenths of a point behind. Even if she scored a 10, Can't she do could it. not win. But to show you what, what, what uh, Kathy Johnson had to do, watch the performance of Julianne McNamara. She is really great in this event. Fantastic amplitude on her tumbling movements. Double back somersault, floats out. This is a new uh, routine for Julianne. Different music than she used last year. Second tumbling pass coming up. Rush in front. Double twisted. You know, Len, just a few years ago, they used to only have piano accompanying the gymnast. I love the new renditions, the music that is being used today, the synthesizers. The orchestrations. Now her dismount. Round of back handspring. Double twisting back layout. Kathy Johnson had to perform that routine because this kid just did a magnificent floor exercise routine. And once again, my prediction at the beginning of the show, Len, if she went four for four, she would have beat Kathy Johnson. That five-tenth reduction, that fall on B, course of the all -around. What duels? It's going to be some duels coming up this year between these gymnasts. Julianne McNamara, as you can see, <laughs> she looks a little tired after the event. That's you great. Can, you can see that the sports they are competitors, but they do pull for one another. Watch the double back somersault here in pike position. Not as compressed as Kathy Johnson, but look at the height. The quick rotation. Kicks out, floats down. Just great. 9.8. Is the score for Kathy Johnson. As we take a look at Julianne McNamara. Her score, 9.7. She pretty well wraps up second place in the all-around with that score. And here she is. Nobody could be more surprised than Nancy Goldsmith to be in this position, currently third in the all-around. deduction there. What does she need to stay in third place? She needs a score higher than 9.1, and she just picked up a 5 tenth deduction on the double back somersault. Now that's another deduction. She kind of stumbled there. Looking no. at the, uh, the background of the full house here at Caesars Palace, indicating that gymnastics is on the upswing. I know that you have a gymnastics school. What about the popularity today? Well, at one time, there were very few gymnastic schools in the United States, private schools. And many of them have uh, opened up in the last five years. There are little, literally hundreds of them throughout the United States, represented by the USA IGC organization. That's the organization for independent clubs, which Mr. Nepper is the executive director and the meet director for this event. We're coming down to the conclusion second annual Caesars Palace Invitation. A full twisting back somersault, very clean, but she had a lot of mistakes in that routine, specifically the double back somersault and that little stumble on the double turn. It's going to be very close. 9.1 and higher. Let's see what happens. 
this uh, tumbling pass. This is, by the way, one of the requirements. And here she stumbles a little bit. Look at this little stumble here. That's the deduction, and she almost stepped out. This is a requirement, two different types of tumbling movements in one tumbling series. This is called an Arabian. That's one type of acrobatic movement. And to a, a full twisting back somersault, this fulfills this particular requirement in floor exercise. I'm anxious to see what the score was. Nancy Goldsmith needs over 9.1, and she gets 9.05. So she winds up in fourth place. And that winds up the second annual Caesars Palace Gymnastics Invitational. Here are the final standings of the floor exercise. Kathy Johnson, 9.80 in first place. Julianne McNamara in second place. Tammy Smith in third place. The finals in the all-around. Here are the standings. Kathy Johnson, 38.60. Julianne McNamara just four-tenths of a point behind in second place. Tammy Smith in third place. Nancy Goldsmith in fourth. And here are the final four. Let's now go down to the floor. Harry Wald, president of Caesars Palace, is there to present the all-around trophy to Kathy Johnson. Well, here is the trophy for the Caesars Palace Invitational. It's pretty heavy. I don't know how you're going to manage this thing, but I want to congratulate you personally because the floor exercise that you did was just magnificent. It was very close up to that exercise, and that was a tell. Congratulations to you. you make it all right? <laughs> Kathy Johnson wins the 1981 Caesars Palace Gymnastics Invitational. Let's go down to the floor where she's there with Bart Conner. Kathy, you look just great. How's it feel? Great. I just, I can't even describe it. It's tremendous. I know you've been off competition for a little while, and everybody's giving you this stuff about being the oldest girl and uh, over the hill in gymnastics, but I've never seen you look better. What's going through your mind now? Well, maybe I'm following Murphy's Law. He said once, when you get over the hill, you pick up speed. So I hope that's the way it's going to go. Well, it sounds like you have a great attitude. What's going to come out from here? Are you going to another competition or what? Well, the next week I'll be going to Vienna for the International Compulsory Clinic. And then I'll, we, I'll be waved right through to the USA Championships, which are in March. Fantastic. Well, you look great and lots of luck to you. Back to you, Len. Bart, thank you very much. And we can see that Kathy Johnson is very, very excited with the great performance she had today. And someone that should be very excited is you, John, because you predicted what was going to happen. Well, Kathy Johnson is a real artist, and, you know, with all the experience that she has in competition, she's always improving. It's great to see a 21-year-old girl do this, and I think all the young kids, like Tammy Smith, who took third place, have to be very impressed with what Kathy has done. Julianne McNamara, once she develops that consistency, that fall on the uh, uh, balance beam really hurt her, but... If she goes four for four, nobody's going to touch her. John, congratulations on your prediction. You. Linda Jackson, after your first uh, television debut, what did you think? Well, I was very impressed, I have to say, by these young ladies. I wasn't too surprised, though. They told me they were going to be exciting today, and they certainly were. And it was great. 